This is how strong Spider-Man is, where we see him supporting an entire collapsing building that's 50 stories tall or roughly 250,000 tons. And this is Miles Morales turning invisible, getting the drop on Spider-Man in a fight, electrocuting him, with him later shattering Captain America's shield with a single punch. But which one of these Spider-Man is stronger? Who would win in a battle? Growing up with and eventually teaching myself out of my speech impediments, majoring in science in college, and having directed programs that teach people how to safely do really cool tricks, it's safe to say that I think Spider-Man is pretty awesome. The spider that bit Peter Parker was originally just a regular spider, one that happened to get in the way of a neogenic laser that Peter and the rest of his class were learning about that day, which in its dying moments lashed out and bit Peter. Miles, on the other hand, was bit by a spider that was genetically engineered by Oscorp, known as Specimen 42, which gave Miles a similar set of powers, but there are some major differences. The full set of powers that Peter was given when he was bit by an accidentally genetically charged spider was drastically increased strength that is generally said to be about 20 tons under optimal conditions, or 40,000 pounds, although this is more so him holding way back. He has enhanced speed and agility that has been noted to be around 15 times more than the average human being has stronger connective tissues and tendons that are paradoxically said to be over two times as elastic as a regular person's, giving him far greater control over the amount of force he exerts and allows him to produce even more power. Spider-Man's endurance is also said to be so enhanced that he can fight for hours on end at pretty much full capacity without ever needing to rest. He's durable enough to take a full punch from the Hulk with him shortly getting back up, although be it after a quick breather. Spider-Man can famously crawl on walls, with this ability actually being a sort of biomagnetism, meaning that, more or less, Peter has a mental control over the electrostatic reaction, otherwise the attractive effect that his molecules now have to other objects. And this attractive force doesn't just go for Peter's hands and feet, but rather his entire body, as he can cling to walls with his back, has been known to attach civilians to himself, one time crawling up three miles of a shaft with a severe bullet wound. His spider sense, typically depicted as a low-level psychic ability, cause actual spiders just have their eyes, alerts him to any immediate danger, with it also warning him of the severity of the danger at hand. And Peter has gotten so acquainted with his spider sense that it's become a major component of his fighting style, with him honing it over years of countless battles, allowing him to become almost impossible to hit when it's used in conjunction with his superhuman human agility and reflexes. It can even help him anticipate threats that are seconds or even minutes away wherever they might be, which also makes him a nightmare to play hide and seek with. On top of this, Spider-Man has a healing factor due to his reported superhuman metabolism that allows him to recover from having acid thrown in his eyes that practically blinded him, having his arm or legs completely broken, and come back from explosions that literally melted steel or 1,540 degrees Celsius, with him just sleeping all of this off, healing it with just one good night's rest. Strangely, Spider-Man also has a lesser known and lesser used night vision ability that, even to his own surprise, allows him to see even in the darkest of tunnels beneath New York. And this host of powers has allowed Peter to do some downright incredible things. He has the strength to snap a fire hydrant in half, which being made out of cast iron and being four and a half to just over over five inches thick, while also having a tensile strength of seven tons per square inch, would be ripping through the fire hydrant with a strength or force equal to 31.5 to 35 tons of force. Spider-Man casually threw the Punisher hundreds of feet into the air, or otherwise if the 200 pound Punisher is, say, 400 feet off the ground, or about 35 stories, then Spider-Man had to casually chuck him at speed somewhere around around 135 miles an hour to reach that distance. He can casually throw a 3,000 pound car with several 400 pound enemies on top of it, slamming it into the nearest building, can bend and break steel bars with his bare hands, which if they're anything like steel rebar, would require a force of around if not well over 157,000 pounds. Spider-Man has shredded his way through a 3 inch thick steel door, with steel having a shearing strength 
length of let's take the median 100,000 pounds per square inch, giving Spider-Man a pulling force of somewhere between 150 tons or 300,000 pounds and somewhere below 1,000 tons or 2 million pounds, depending on the type of steel that was used. Spider-Man has used the strength to break open large vaults to pull down helicopters, crashing them into tanks, has caught an entire roller coaster, lifted 40-ton subway cars, and one time even acted as the landing gear for a crashing private jet that, falling at terminal velocity or otherwise 120 miles per hour, Peter survived Superman forces of around 10,000 tons compressing his body throughout the duration of the landing. Not only this, but Spider-Man is said to pretty much always hold back whenever he fights just about anyone, and this is for their own good. Because if he doesn't, then he'll easily take off the jaw of criminals like Scorpion, as he can punch his way through small to large steel vaults at speeds that would roughly take his fist, moving over 2 million meters a second or near 5 million miles an hour, allowing him to also one-shot Heralds of Galactus. So it's not much of a surprise that he can easily leap up around 10 stories or over a hundred feet into the air. People literally break their hands trying to punch him. He can casually hurl around three-ton wrecking balls, survive exploding buildings, missiles, and being electrocuted by power cables in tunnels that have up to 765,000 volts that would easily roast someone into ashes. Peter's powers also make him pretty resistant to drugs and toxins that would easily paralyze or kill someone. He has survived contact with acid that would dissolve a human and being shot by Mysterio with enough depressant to kill an entire herd of elephants. Beyond this, Peter can hold his breath for over 20 minutes and thanks to his superhuman agility, he can move fast enough to dodge bullet fire if he has enough distance and with the help of his spider sense, even if it senses the bullet after it was fired. And generally, Spider-Man can move or run at speeds anywhere from 75 miles an hour to sometimes over 200 miles an hour if he really pushes it. With some of his most impressive feats being him either lifting up the entire Daily Bugle or a collapsing tunnel that's 95 feet under the East River, a train station, or swimming under a building, and literally splitting the freaking thing in half, that for all of these feats would give him a broad strength of somewhere between 500 to 1,000 tons to pull these things off. Then we have Miles Morales, who, like Peter, at some level has the same set of powers. His wall crawling ability is dependent on the same Van Der Waals force that allows the molecules in his body to be attracted to those and other objects, much like a spider or gecko. He has the durability to take a full force running hit from Rhino's horn, or otherwise a near 100 mile an hour hit from a 700 pound man without even piercing his skin. Miles has also taken the Hulk's thunderclap that has the capability to liquefy concrete at minimum being 1200 degrees Celsius, and would also light everything on fire for a mile around him. But unlike Spider-Man, Miles also has two additional powers, being his Venom Blast and his Camouflage ability. What you may not know is Miles' Venom Blast is far more versatile than most would think, as he can not only use it to augment his strikes, hitting people with what is basically bioelectric energy that he can generate, but he can also release this energy as a giant explosion via his Ultra Venom Blast. He can stream his Venom Blast through objects like webbing, and can also shoot it out as its own type of special webbing, or if he wants, a giant energy beam. Beyond that, Miles can instantly camouflage himself, or otherwise just turn invisible anywhere because he just can. But one other power that Miles' genetic spider gave him over Peter's is his spider sense works quite a bit differently. While Peter's is generally used for more immediate threats, Miles can also alert him to immediate danger, but it also gives him an additional power of precognition, as his spider sense can alert him or give him foreknowledge of an event that will, or in some cases, has occurred that everyone else remains unaware of. As in one instance, where the Avengers and other heroes had their reality and lives rewritten, with Miles being turned into a mechanic along with Tony Stark, Miles was the only one who was able to sense and even dream that things had gone really wrong. And as a teacher and someone who was obsessed with learning my way out of my social fears and not blowing up the chemistry lab, it's often the qualities within people, the ones that we can 
cannot see outright that are the most important. So who out of these two Spider-Man would win in a matchup? This is a relationship of mentor and mentee. And as my mentor said to me, a great teacher wins when their student passes them up. At the point of their meetup and eventual working together, Peter has been Spider-Man for nearly a decade, while Miles is inching closer towards a couple of years. Miles does have an inherent advantage over his predecessor, being able to electrocute Peter and knock him unconscious in a variety of ways that Miles may not even fully know yet, as Miles is actually what you could call an energy manipulator. And then there's Miles' camouflage ability that would allow him to get the drop on Peter and possibly end the fight rather quickly, which is likely what Miles would need to do. However, Peter is used to fighting invisible opponents, having thoroughly integrated his spider sense into his combat style, allowing him to still attack and dodge invisible opponents like Sue Storm and others. And beyond that, Peter has trained under some of the best fighters in Marvel, like Captain America and Shang-Chi, who helped him, due to his spider sense being on the fritz, to invent his own type of spider martial art that he can use and has been practicing for quite some time. Overall, due to possibly his powers, aided by his experience, age, skills, and training, Peter is generally thought and seen to be much stronger, faster, more durable, and agile than Miles is. Having performed far bigger than life feats, having lifted thousands of tons, while Miles hasn't yet been shown lifting anything over 10 tons, Miles may win due to his unique powers, and as he grows into an adult under the guidance of his mentor. But Peter's powers and experience, and even his current intellect, is just way too much for Miles to overcome 8 out of 10 times. The current winner of this matchup is Peter Parker. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Like in our video of Goku vs Superman, each of these characters possesses traits that make an argument for either side plausible, with the spider that bit Miles being once loosely theorized to give him, because of its association with Oscorp and the Green Goblin, some form of immortality. With us going over the insane science behind Goku's godlike training, and Superman's planet pulling feats to see who would win in a matchup up in this video. See you in the next one.